Hello, and today I'm going to be looking at the 4K UHD edition of Doctor Sleep coming up. Hello, I'm Keith and welcome to another Home Media Minefield, helping you with information to navigate the complexities of home cinema and home media entertainment. And in today's episode, I'm going to be looking at the 4K UHD release of Doctor Sleep, which is Mike Flanagan's 2019 adaptation of Stephen King's novel and sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Now, I've previously done an unboxing video that looks at the limited edition still book that I have here, but today I'm going to talk about the contents on the actual disc itself. Now, with this particular package that I'm talking about, you get a three disc edition. So you get a 4K UHD of the theatrical cut of the film. You also get a Blu-ray version of that film, which includes some bonus content and you get an exclusive Blu-ray of the director's cut of the film, which includes an additional 30 minutes. Now it is worth pointing out that most copies available include just a two disc version, so the 4K UHD and the Blu-ray of the theatrical version. Unless the packaging specifically says so, not all of the versions include the third disc with the director's cut. Now I will put links down below as to where to find these different versions. Now first up with the picture quality here. This film was shot in 6.5k and has a digital intermediate of 4k so it's absolutely perfect for the 4k ultra high def format. Much like the original Shining was shot on film and Warner did a really great transfer for the 4K version which I've previously covered. Likewise the 4K digital intermediate here works excellent for this release. The image is crystal clear, the colours pop and you can also see details in the shadows as a lot of this film takes place at night. Warner also seem to be doing a very good job of their HDR supporting both Dolby Vision and HDR10+. Plus. So regardless of which brand television projector or player that you're using here, you're going to get the absolute optimum quality HDR, which is something that the Warner releases seem very committed to. Now for the UK package, you don't get a digital download of this but it is fair for me to point out that this film including the director's cut is actually available in 4k for streaming to rent or buy from iTunes or Amazon Prime etc. Again I'll include some links below on this. Now onto the audio side, for the English soundtrack on this you do get a full Dolby Atmos mix and 5.1 for some of the other languages. Now my system isn't a full Dolby Atmos system but I'm really glad that this disc has that because I feel somewhat future proofed with it then uh, for if I do upgrade but as far as listening to it on my system the sound was very sharp, uh, the score was very clear and there were definitely some atmospheric separation on some of the creepier scenes. But I genuinely think as far as the audio and video of this goes, Warner have done a fantastic job. Now onto the special features. Let's cover first of all the bonus disc which includes the director's cut of this. Now I watch both back to back and in terms of what is different there is actually not much in terms of additional scenes you may be surprised to hear as it's nearly half an hour longer. Um, instead what you tend to get are longer scenes. For example the scene with Halloran and young Danny 
goes into a lot more detail about the shining and what the shining actually is and the events that happened at the Overlook Hotel nearly 40 years earlier. You also get a much more extended scene at the Overlook Hotel between Danny and his father Jack Torrance with some great acting here between Ewan McGregor and Henry Thomas. You do get some more backstory with Abra and her family in the 2011 portion of this film, which just involves a little bit more about the parents noticing some of her gifts. And you get some longer scenes involving a bit more backstory with, with the True Knot gang. Really, most of this stuff is just fleshing the characters out a lot more. But for those expecting massive changes from the theatrical version, you might be disappointed because, as I said, it is just really more longer scenes and more character development. Personally, I really like the director's cut version, but I could understand how some people might think it's a little long at a three hour running time. The other significant change here is they have put chapter titles in throughout the narrative. Now onto the special features that are on the Blu-ray of the theatrical cut. First up you get a five minute featurette called From Shining to Sleep. And this essentially comprises of interviews with Mike Flanagan and Stephen King. Now Flanagan enthuses about how he's a huge Stephen King fan growing up and how it's influenced a lot of his work and how it was a great honour to be able to do this adaptation of Stephen King's story but also try and keep it faithful to the Stanley Kubrick film. Now King, who wasn't a fan of Kubrick's version of The Shining, does admit during this that he was in a very different place when he wrote the first Shining to where he was when he wrote Doctor Sleep. And they, they talk about the themes of alcoholism and how each story deals with it in a different way. And they talk about the changes that Mike Flanagan made to the novel in order to, in the third act, try and tie this in so it would match up with the ending of the original Shining novel. Next up you get a 14 minute featurette, The Making of Doctor Sleep, A New Vision. Now this features not only behind the scenes footage, but interviews with all of the key cast and crew. It starts with Mike Flanagan saying how he got Stephen King's blessing with this particular script. And indeed the careful casting that went on with this, trying to find actors that looked like the original characters and basically embodied those characters, but without actually trying to do an impression of the actors, but rather focusing just on the character and how they tried to recreate some of the classic scenes from Kubrick's film. In the 15 minutes, this does cover quite a bit of ground, but personally, I'd have liked for this to have been a much longer and a much more in-depth documentary about the making of the film. And then finally on this, you get a 15 minute featurette called Return to the Overlook. And this is largely talking about the rebuilding of the sets to perfectly match the Stanley Kubrick film. They say how both Warner Brothers and the Stanley Kubrick estate were very helpful in letting them have the original plans to actually rebuild much of this. This was actually rebuilt practically for this film as opposed to what Spielberg did with Ready Player One where they actually created a lot of the Overlook Hotel virtually and how they went to great lengths to try and respect the continuity. And Mike Flanagan is really geeking out about how he felt like a kid again when he was on the set and uh, he even rode the tricycle bike round the hallways, etc. Again, this was great to see. I just wish we could have had more of it. And that's about it. I mean, you do get some decent special features on here. Um, what I would have really liked, particularly on the director's cut, would have been a commentary by Mike Flanagan. Uh, Mike Flanagan does do excellent commentaries on his films and is very passionate about this sort of thing. Uh, I guess in this particular instance, he was probably busy and had to go on to, uh, to produce and direct The Haunting of Bly Manor for Netflix. 
but it's a shame because on the Blu-ray releases of The Haunting of Hill House, which he did previously, which I've covered on this channel, there are some extended episodes that he does commentaries on and explains why, and I'd have liked a similar thing on the director's cut of this, but um, sadly not. But all in all, if you're a fan of this film and a fan of this work, I think this is well worth investing in. The picture and audio quality is superb on this. It's great that you get the director's cut as well as the theatrical version. And there are some special features on here to keep us happy. As I said, I will put some links below as to where you can find this stuff. And please check out some of my previous videos covering The Shining and The Haunting of Hill House. And that brings me to the end of another home media minefield. I hope you found this helpful and interesting. If you did, then please like and consider subscribing to that channel and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss anything moving forward. I do put out physical media reviews every week, uh, not only on new titles, but on older titles and releases as well. If there's anything in particular that you'd like me to cover, then please put down in the comments below and I will do my best to add those to the schedule. But in the meantime, I thank you for today and I will speak to you at the next Home Media Minefield.